Hey everyone, and welcome to part 3 of our walkthrough series for Current 2.0, our update to our flagship synthesizer. Let's take a look at the engine that powers the synth. Current is made up of 5 sound generators, 2 wavetable oscillators, the granular sampler, the sub oscillator, and the sampler. Let's go over each part of the engine so that you can get a feel for designing sounds in Current. Current contains two wavetable oscillators with a multitude of flexibility. You can scrub through the waveforms of the wavetables using the position knob to create timbral movement and build expressive patches. With a wavetable loaded, it can be further manipulated using the warp modes which include format shifting, wave shaping, filtering, and other creative possibilities. Now, we'll check out Current's unison and tuning options. You can set the number of unison voices here. Adding more voices will create a denser sound resulting in a fuller spectrum. Detune allows you to adjust the amount of detuning between the unison voices. and unison width adjusts the stereo width of the unison effect. This combines panning and phase manipulation to create a wide stereo image. At the top of the wavetable scope, we have our tuning options. Key. This option provides standard key tracking behavior with variable semitone offset. Fixed. This option forces the wavetable oscillator to be tuned to a specific note, regardless of the notes played on the keyboard. Ratio. This option allows you to shift the tuning up or down by multiplying or dividing it by a whole number ratio. It's particularly useful for FM synthesis in creating layers based on the harmonic series. Scale. Lock the tuning to the root note of the current scale. Notes on the keyboard will be ignored and the tuning will be transposed when the scale changes. The fundamental on and off button is useful when layering your sounds with the sub oscillator. Current includes a ton of wavetables in its factory content, but for more advanced sound designers, the stream provides an even wider variety of options, ranging from raw analog tones to expressive bowed strings, powerful bass growls, and much more. You can also import and create your own wavetables by dragging an audio file onto the waveform display. The wavetable oscillators in Current are extremely powerful and versatile tools, but they're just the beginning of the sound design possibilities available in the synth. To gain a deeper understanding of what Current is capable of, let's move on to the granular engine. Current's granular engine allows for the complete transformation of samples into new textures, sequences, rhythms, and more. Granular processing breaks the sound into smaller pieces, known as grains. This enables you to rearrange and manipulate those grains in various ways. Create granular sequences, massive clouds, stutter effects, and ambient textures. Let's dive into the granular controls. Grain layers. This sets the number of grains that will be generated within the amount of time determined by the rate. This can be used to create very dense textures and grain sequences when combined with different layer patterns. Layer pattern. This chooses how the grain layers will be played back within the amount of time determined by the rate. These modes will produce a variety of effects depending on the rate and size settings, ranging from random clouds to dense stabs. Position. Position sets the primary playback position where the grains will be generated. Spray. This adjusts the amount of randomization that is applied to the playhead of each grain when it starts to play. Speed. This is the playback speed for the sample. A value of 100% will preserve the sample's original timing. Higher values will play the sample faster, and lower values slower. 
all the way down to zero, and your playback will freeze. Speed Sync. When activated, speed will be synced to an even ratio. Note, this will only synchronize the sample to the DAW's timeline if the BPM of the sample matches that of your project. Layer Span. This adjusts the spacing between the playheads of each grain layer. Bipolar Span. When activated, the span playheads will be evenly spaced around the primary playhead, which is determined by its position. Stereo Offset. This adjusts the offset between the left and right playheads. It's useful to create a variety of interesting stereo effects. Offset Sync. When activated, the offset time will sync to the current BPM. Rate. This sets the amount of time between the groups of grain layers when they're triggered. Rate Mode. Free. Sets the rate in seconds. Sync. Sets the rate as a division of the current BPM. This is useful for synced looping and stutter-like effects. Key. In this mode, the grain rate will track currently playing notes with a semitone offset determined by rate. This can be used to preserve the tonality of a sample as you play different notes. Grain size. This sets the length of each grain window as a percentage of the current rate setting. Punch. When active, the first grain of each new note will have an immediate onset, bypassing the rising slope of the current grain's shape. This is useful for preserving transients and allowing you to control the entire attack portion of your sound with an envelope, similar to what you would do with a standard sampler. Direction. Chooses the playback direction for each grain's playhead. Then we have our grain shape parameters. Grain shape adjusts the shape of the grain window. Skew adjusts how the grain shape is distributed between the start and end of the grain. And finally, we have our playback modes. Playback mode chooses how the sample will play back when triggered. Free. This mode allows you to scrub freely through the sample using the position control, and the playheads will loop. One shot. Play through the sample once, and then stop. Loop forward. Play through the sample and loop. Loop forward backward. Play through the sample and loop back and forth. Sample reverse. Reverses the current sample. Sample gain. Applies additional gain to the sample. This can be useful for matching the sample's level to the rest of your patch without having to use level control. Current's granular engine allows our users almost unlimited sound design capabilities. Let's move on to the sub oscillator. Current's additive sub oscillator is built to produce precise and powerful low end with minimal effort. Powered by additive synthesis, the sub oscillator uses a bank of sine waves known as partials to simulate different waveforms. This is especially useful for a sub-oscillator because it allows you to select the desired number of harmonics. It also enables harmonic mixing and other creative effects to create movement in the low end. Features such as an integrated pitch envelope, additive wave shaping, and spectrum effects make it a comprehensive tool for all bass-related needs. It's a robust tool, so let's take a minute and explore the module together. Sub waveform chooses the waveform type of the sub oscillator. Partials specifies the number of partials or harmonics that the sub oscillator will produce. A single partial means that the oscillator generates a simple sine wave. Adding more partials will introduce upper harmonics that depend on the current sub oscillator mode. Monophonic mode. When activated, the sub oscillator will be forced into monophonic mode even if the rest of the instrument is polyphonic. This is useful for maintaining a clean present low end while still being able to play chords using the other engine modules. Direct out. 
When active, the sub oscillator will not pass through the filters or the effects rack. This is useful for keeping the low end of your audio signal clean while still being able to process the rest of your patch. Sub lock. When enabled, the sub oscillator will be forced to play within one octave range. This can be used in a variety of creative ways, particularly when combined with the other engine modules. Sub lock range sets the lowest note that can be played when the sub lock is active. For example, if you set the range to start with C, all notes will be transposed to the same octave, and C will be the lowest available note. The partials of the sub oscillator also have the capability to be harmonically detuned. Detune modulation adjusts the amount of modulation applied to the detuning of the upper harmonics. This uses internal LFOs that track the oscillator's frequency to create additional movement and flavors of detuning. The drop-down menu above the spectra parameter allows you to choose from a variety of additive spectrum effects. Changing the value of that parameter adjusts the currently selected spectrum effect. This control sets the balance between harmonics in various ways. Modulating it can be a great way to introduce movement to your low end. Adjusting the knock amount changes the amount of pitch envelope applied to the sub oscillator. This can be used to quickly create kicks, 808s, stabs, or any bass sound that requires some punch. Knock decay. This controls the duration for the envelope's decay. We've carefully tuned the knock envelope to prioritize sweet spots. Let's check out the sub oscillator's drive section. Drive type allows you to choose from a variety of distortion types that are carefully tuned for sub bass. Drive amount adjusts the amount of gain applied to the sub before passing through the currently selected distortion type. This gain is applied differently to each partial in the sub oscillator to better emphasize the low end. The sub oscillator also features the same tuning controls as other parts of Current's engine. Lastly, you can control the phase of the sub oscillator here. The sub oscillator is one of Current's secret weapons. It allows you to create pristine low end for any type of patch. The Sampler. Current's sampler can be used to play loops, one-shots, noise, or any samples from the stream and your personal library. It includes an advanced time-stretching algorithm called Flex Mode that allows you to easily adjust the tempo of loops and other sounds to fit into your projects. This makes it well-suited to serve as the center of a patch, as well as a source for layering anything. Let's check the sampler's controls. Fade In. Fade In sets the percentage of the sample that will fade in when the note starts. Fade Out sets the percentage of the sample that will fade out before the sample ends. Note, this is only available in one-shot mode. Crossfade sets the percentage of the sample that will fade out and in based on the loop selection. Note that this is only available for the loop modes. Start sets the sample's start point. End sets the sample's end point. Loop Start sets the sample's loop start point. This can be set independently of the primary start by toggling the Start Link button. Start Link. When activated, the loop start and primary start will be linked. Otherwise, each one can be set independently. Random Start. This adjusts how much randomization is applied to the sample's start position. The Sampler section hosts two sampling modes, each with a different set of features. Repitch. 
In this mode, the speed of the samples changes as their pitch changes, similar to classic samplers. Unison controls are also available in this mode, allowing for densely layered samples. Flex. This mode utilizes a high-quality time-stretching algorithm to maintain the original sample's timing regardless of pitch. This time stretching can be manipulated to produce a variety of interesting effects. The re-pitch mode uses classic re-sample style tuning, meaning the sample plays faster or slower depending on the note that you're playing. Unison Voices sets the number of unison voices. Adding more voices will create a denser sound, but it will require somewhat more CPU. Unison Detune adjusts the amount of detuning between the unison voices. Unison Width adjusts the stereo width of the unison effect. This combines panning and phase manipulation to create a wide stereo image. Note that this will manipulate the stereo image even without detuning or phase randomization. In Flex Mode, Current Sampler features three different stretching algorithms that are tuned for specific types of samples. This allows you to play samples in multiple pitches without the speed of the sample changing. Source BPM sets the BPM of the source sample. Setting the BPM to that of the currently loaded sample ensures that the sample is correctly stretched to match your project. Note that this is set automatically when loading factory content. Flex Speed sets the playback speed of the sample independently of its pitch. There are two speed modes, Free, which allows you to freely adjust the speed creating totally fluid time stretching effects, and Ratio, in which speed will be locked to a whole ratio, allowing for quick and precise time stretching. Additionally, there are a number of playback modes that choose how the sample will play when triggered. One shot plays through the sample once and then stops. Loop forward plays through the sample and loops. Loop forward backward plays through the sample and loops back and forth. Sample reverse reverses the sample. Sample gain applies additional gain to the sample. Similar to the granular engine, this is useful for matching the sample's level to the rest of your patch without having to use the level control. The final part of the sampler we'll go over is the filter section. Filter mode allows a basic filter type that the sampler can be sent through. Filter cutoff sets the cutoff frequency for the chosen filter. Current sampler is a cornerstone of the synthesizer's architecture. Its warping modes allow you to charge your patches with a powerful layer of dynamic texture. Current 2.0 is available now. You can grab it on the site or trial it free for 30 days with all access. If you'd like to learn more about Current 2.0, stick with us for the next segment, The Stream.